Hello everyone! Today's video, we're venturing into the enigmatic underworld of the Mafia to unravel the story of Charles Lucky Luciano. From his humble beginnings to the heights of organized crime, Luciano's tale is filled with intrigue, strategy, and unexpected alliances. So sit back, relax, and let's delve into the captivating life of one of the most influential mobsters in history. Charles Lucky Luciano was born Salvatore Lucania on November 24, 1897, in the town of Lercura Fritti, located on the island of Sicily in Italy. His parents, Antonio and Rosalia Lucania, lived modestly in a traditional Italian household. The Lucania family, like many from southern Italy at the turn of the century, sought better opportunities and a fresh start, leading them to immigrate to the United States in 1906. They settled in New York's Lower East Side, an area characterized by its teeming tenements and a mosaic of immigrant communities. By his teenage years, Luciano was already showing entrepreneurial spirit, albeit in a criminal sense. He was involved in petty crimes, including extortion of local businesses. Young Salvatore would force kids to pay him for protection, hinting at the kind of rackets he would mastermind on a larger scale in adulthood. These early forays into crime were likely influenced by his environment, where gangsters like Big Jim Colosimo and Johnny Torrio were emerging as legends in the Italian-American underworld. From his early days in the criminal world, Charles Lucky Luciano forged crucial alliances that would solidify his position and influence. Two of the most notable associations he formed were with Meyer Lansky and Benjamin Bugsy Siegel. Meyer Lansky, a polished Jewish immigrant, was more than just an ally to Luciano. He was a trusted advisor and friend. Together, they orchestrated numerous operations, from bootlegging during the Prohibition era to gambling rackets that spanned continents. Lansky's financial acumen and Luciano's raw leadership qualities made them a formidable pair in the underworld. Similarly, Benjamin Bugsy Siegel, a charismatic yet ruthless figure, became one of Luciano's key associates. Their bond was solidified through various joint ventures, including the formation of the notorious hit squad, Murder Incorporated Siebel's audacity, combined with Luciano's strategic vision, allowed them to expand their territories and influence. In addition to Lansky and Siegel, Luciano also maintained associations with other influential Mafia figures like Frank Costello, Vito Genovese, and Joe Adonis, weaving a tight-knit network that would come to dominate the American Mafia. Several pivotal moments marked Luciano's meteoric rise in the mob world. Castellan Reese War This brutal power struggle between Sicilian-born mob bosses Joe Vassiria and Salvatore Maranzano was a defining moment. Luciano, initially aligned with Vassiria, strategically switched sides, eventually orchestrating the assassination of both bosses. This move ended the war and allowed Luciano to emerge as a dominant force in the Mafia. Post the Castellamarese War, Luciano restructured the New York Mafia into five distinct families, which still exist today. This arrangement was intended to ensure balance, minimize conflicts, and streamline criminal operations. Recognizing the need for a governing body to mediate disputes and set policies for the Mafia nationwide, Luciano established the commission in 1931. This ruling council, composed of the heads of the major Mafia families, became the ultimate authority in the American Mafia, further cementing Luciano's influence and vision. In the aftermath of the Castellamarese War, Charles Lucky Luciano recognized the need for a complete overhaul of the American Mafia's structure. The continuous infighting and power struggles were not only bad for business, but threatened the very existence of organized crime in the United States. Luciano proposed a new structure, dividing the existing power bases in New York into five distinct Mafia families, each headed by a boss who would oversee operations within their territory. This decentralization aimed to minimize conflicts over territory and interests. While decentralization reduced infighting, there still needed to be a central authority to mediate disputes, establish policies, and provide direction for the Mafia families across the nation. Thus, Luciano introduced a commission in 1931. The commission was a governing body, consisting of the heads of the major Mafia families, not just from New York, but from around the country. It acted as a sort of Mafia United Nations, where disputes were settled, strategies were discussed, and decisions were made, ensuring no single family had too much power. The formation of the commission was a masterstroke. It significantly reduced violence between families, leading to increased stability and profitability. It also made law enforcement's job more challenging, 
as targeting one family or its leaders would necessarily disrupt the operations of others. The mustache beats refer to the old guard of the mafia, the first generation of Sicilian mafiosi who came to the U.S. Their worldview was rooted in the traditions and feuds of Sicily. They were often resistant to change and held a distrust for non-Sicilians, which made them less adaptable to the evolving landscape of American organized crime. Luciano, having grown up in America, recognized that for organized crime to thrive, it had to evolve. His vision was far-reaching, seeing the potential for the Mafia to become a major player in the U.S. economy, infiltrating legitimate businesses and expanding its criminal enterprises. By orchestrating the assassinations of key mustache peats like Masseria and Moranzano during the Castellamarice War, Luciano effectively ended the reign of the old guard. Under Luciano's guidance, the Mafia expanded into new ventures, from the narcotics trade to the entertainment industry. He believed in collaboration, even with non-Italian criminal groups, understanding that unity was strength. This shift in mindset and approach marked the beginning of the American Mafia's golden age, with Luciano at the forefront, shaping its destiny. Under Charles Lucky Luciano's leadership, the American Mafia witnessed an unprecedented expansion in its operations. The profits from these ventures were staggering. At its peak, Luciano's empire wasn't limited to New York or even the United States. His operations had global links, reaching as far as Europe and Latin America. During Second World War, Luciano found an opportunity to turn his incarceration to his advantage. In the early 1940s, the U.S. government was concerned about potential sabotage and enemy activities along the East Coast, especially in the ports of New York. Luciano, through intermediaries, struck a deal with the U.S. Navy in exchange for providing intelligence and ensuring labor peace on the docks, thus preventing any potential sabotage. Luciano expected leniency in his prison sentence. This operation, known as Operation Underworld, saw the Mafia collaborating with the U.S. government to safeguard the home front. Luciano's assistance during the war did not go unrewarded. In 1946, after serving only 10 years of his 30 to 50 year sentence for running a prostitution ring, New York Governor Thomas E. Dewey, who ironically had been instrumental in Luciano's conviction, commuted his sentence on the condition that Luciano would be deported to Italy and never return to the United States. Upon arriving in Italy, Luciano initially settled in Rome, but eventually moved to Naples. Despite being thousands of miles away from the epicenter of his empire, Luciano still tried to maintain some control over his operations. However, his influence had waned, and he couldn't command the same power he once wielded in the U.S. He remained in Italy until his death in 1962. And there we have it, the incredible journey of Lucky Luciano, a man whose legacy in the world of organized crime is unparalleled. If you found this deep dive into Luciano's life as fascinating as we did, Please remember to like this video and share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.